My name is Alex Rodriguez, the National Training Director for Chi Alpha Campus Ministries. For as long as I can remember, I have been fascinated with the practice of preaching. How shall they believe in Jesus of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? This fascination created a journey to investigate preaching as much as possible. This means reading good books. This means listening to powerful sermons. This also means exchanging thoughts with inspiring preachers. That is what this show is about. Preachers talking preaching. My guest this week is Crystal Martin. Crystal is the Cross-Cultural Missions Director for Chi Alpha Campus Ministries. She is the teaching pastor for Central Assembly of God in Springfield, Missouri. She is the national director for the Network of Women Ministers for the Assemblies of God. She is a gifted speaker with the ability to turn truth into portable, memorable points of application. Most notably, give a year and pray about a lifetime. A statement so clear and concise it has outlived its World Mission Summit origins. Crystal travels the nation with her multiple responsibilities, preaching multiple sermons in any given week. And today, we get the honor of talking with Crystal Martin about preaching. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Alex. Welcome to the Martin Ranch. It's good to be back. Good to see you again. How are you doing? <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm going to give you a side hug. Yeah, let's that do works. it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Ah, I've been excited. I have too. You're pretty, you're, you, this is pretty commonplace for you out here on this Martin Ranch. I've been here before. You've been here quite a bit. I did chores the last time I the came. The last, I've heard about and those chores. Scott told me that I was not farm strong because <laughs> I couldn't start a chainsaw that was bigger than me. It was very different. Yeah, I have to, to admit, here. Scott is farm strong. He's proud of he's, it. He's farm strong. He is farm strong and, and proud of it. And we did man work that day. That was how he described it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. So what's it like living here on this ranch? It's super peaceful. We have a river three quarters of a mile. We have an Australian shepherd that's favorite job is to, you know, round up these cows. I don't know if there's any cows back here. We got one back over here looking at us suspiciously. Yeah, they all have names. Um, I can't name them all. My, my sons and my husband could name them all. Fair enough. And these cows are not going to slaughter. Okay. So they're That's kind of good. like high end seed stock. Right. So they're going to produce babies and live really nice, Fair lovely enough. lives. If they had names, I would get emotionally attached. And you mentioned your boys. Your boys yeah, grew up here. They did. But they're no longer little boys. They're, they're young not. men graduating college. No. What's that next phase of life been like? Yeah. For you? So we've raised both of our boys here. They got their first cow when they were eight years old, showed at the county fairs. Um, and it really was intended to teach them a work ethic. This is my husband's influence, not mine. Um, teach them a work ethic and have a college fund with the cow that they had. That's pretty wise. So, <laughs> That's pretty, have a college, a college fund, fund and a work ethic. and a work ethic all wrapped up in one right package. On. Well, should we go inside, get some coffee and some tea? I'd love it. Let's do it. When did you know that you wanted to be a preacher? I think the thing that I had to fight for as a female minister is oftentimes preaching isn't an opportunity mm. and people often will give you a ministry without a podium. Sure. And so wow. I think for me, it was about, no, I'm, I'm called to be a holistic minister. I have an apostolic call, which right. means, you know, we're going to go where no one's gone before and I'm going to, I'm going to fight for whatever it means to lead a people, not to lead women, not to lead a small group, but to lead a people. Yes. And I'd say my husband and I have very similar calls. And so we did a lot of that side by side at different seasons in our life. So for me, the call to be a preacher was actually the call to be a minister. Sure. And then that preaching piece is part of that holistic yes. call. Christianity is filled with numerous heroes. Uh, we would not be the same without Catherine Marshall, Catherine Booth, Elizabeth Elliot, Dorothy Sayers, to name a few. God has and is pouring out His Spirit on men and women alike. That's what the Bible said through the prophet Joel. But there are some people that don't believe in all the Bible. So what would you say to any man out there that believes a female preacher can only reach a female audience? Very um, thought-filled question. The issue of women in ministry is actually a pretty deep 
question. And because there's scripture out there that says things like women be silent in the church. And then you have a few chapters later where Paul's speaking to a different audience and he's talking about Junius and Phoebe and sending them out as church planters. You had Priscilla and Aquila as church planters. So I'd say the, the, um, topic of women in a ministry has to be talked about um, because yes. you will find conflicting viewpoints on how people see women in ministry. And so, and theologians have, have looked at this topic and come out with different conclusions. Sure. So if you read commentary on, you know, women be silent in the church, you're going to have like five or six different opinions opinions on what that actually means. And so the good news for us, especially if I'm, I'm speaking to a Chi Alpha audience, I'm speaking to an audience that is in an Assemblies of God church or a Pentecostal background, we have some fantastic theologians out there, uh, Barb Cavernous Parks, a Deborah Gill, who've written books like God's Woman Then and Now, who have really taken the time to give us the basis of theology so that when I stand on a platform, I know that I'm standing on a sound biblical theology and I don't question myself. I know God's called me, he's equipped me, he has asked me to be there and I stand with strong confidence. I do believe that this is a topic that should be covered in small groups sure. um, because we have people from lots of different faith backgrounds that think about women in ministry from different contexts. And even in our culture, we've seen things like what's gone on with Beth Moore and where a lot of these questions, it's actually a very hot button issue. So my first thought is this is something we need to be talking about, we need to be teaching on, and we have some great resources that can help us build strong biblical foundations. For me, I love going back to the garden. We're made in his image, male yeah. and female. We were sent out with two missions, to be fruitful and multiply and to subdue the earth. And my basic take is we need both men and women in the home, and we need both men and women subduing the earth in government, in the po political arena, in the, in the city square, and in the pulpit. Yeah. So the image of God is most complete as men and women work together to accomplish his will. And so that is the foundation that I stand on. So if somebody comes to me, um, if, if somebody in a small group would ask the question like, huh, I've never seen a woman preach before. Man, what a fantastic time for a teaching moment. Um, to go back to some biblical theology, I have that um, God's woman then and now on my Kindle. <laughs> nice. So like if there's a question, I can just go. like, I'm ready. I'm like, okay, this is chapter five. We're right. gonna go through this. Um, so I can go through those questions because we don't wanna leave anybody hanging on um, where we're standing on. But in the end, he is pouring out his spirit on his sons and his daughters. And um, that role of the daughter stepping into their destiny is, um, is really a powerful thing. And if you look at our history, our Chi Alpha history, our Pentecostal history, it has always been men and women moved by the Spirit yeah. to step into their call and step into their destiny. And so understanding the theological peace, not shying away from it. And at the same point, um, if I have somebody that questions me, again, I mentioned about being a coach on game day. If I'm preaching, and this has happened to me before, that I finish my sermon, I sit down, somebody comes and opens the scripture and says, hey, the script Bible says women be silent in the church. Um, I don't agree with what you're doing. I usually will pull an usher in and sure. say, I'm not gonna have this conversation right, right now. It's not time for that. Sure. Um, and and so like I, I take the game day rule pretty seriously and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak to um, my call <laughs> right. on that day. Sure. Um, I think so I will call an usher, you know, I'm not gonna have that conversation. Right. But in a small group setting, in a one-on-one -on -one time, those are great conversations to be having and we need to be having. We talk a lot in Chi Alpha about awakening. I do believe the awakening is gonna be awakening of men and women. Women are gonna be significant in stepping into their destinies yes. as pulpiteers, as preachers, as political leaders, and as moms. And I think, um, I think that's our future. And so let's do this thing. Well, that makes sense. I'm, <laughs> I'm frustrated to hear that you have to leave some pulpits to be met by someone who says, oh, look what the Bible says. Women aren't supposed to preach. That's infuriating to me. <laughs> you I, have a little girl. I, I have a little girl. I, so I, my, my first thoughts are <laughs> one's logical, one's emotional. The logical one is 
are you telling me that with the world going to hell, we need less preachers, not more? Right. And my other thought emotional is, yeah, Wesley Kate, if she ever wanted to do the family business and become a preacher, the audacity for <laughs> someone to tell her she can't do that. <laughs> I need some more coffee. What do you think? All right, let's grab some coffee. I'm kind of a tea person, so. <laughs> I haven't had tea on four years first in 10 years since Kazakhstan. Yeah. What are we having right here? This is just a basic black tea, English, kind of an English tea from an Uzbek teapot with tea bowls. Do you okay. remember tea bowls? I do remember the tea bowls. These so are Uzbekistan tea bowls, these are, Kazakhstan tea bowls. These are from a bazaar in Kyrgyzstan, but I'm not exactly sure where they originated. They may have actually come from China. But we did have a fantastic time our year in Kazakhstan. I had a great Give time. Give a year, pray about a lifetime. It works. It was, it was, <laughs> it works. That's how we started. It was Abby and I's uh, first year ministry and first year marriage. Probably wouldn't recommend that. Even though it wasn't it worked. easy. Sure. I mean, I think potentially being engaged might have been harder. It wasn't easy. I remember, because you, you don't have family to run to. There's no, no. Starbucks to run to. It's and even true. if there is, it's all in Russian and you don't yeah. know where you're ordering. And when you drink your tea, it has to be out of a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> The that's, tea bowl makes it better. That's delightful. The it does make it better. The tea bowl makes it better. If this was in a coffee what, mug, this would be average like tea. boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the tea bowl. You have held uh, responsibilities that haven't really uh, equated to preaching on a habitual basis, yet you have become an excellent preacher. So how does one become an excellent preacher if they have limited preaching opportunities? I, I think we develop niches that people need. So for me, originally, I could preach the Great Commission 300 ways because I spoke on missions. I'm calling students to the nations. And so my niche was missions. My niche has been international student ministry. Um, and so I think when we don't have a, a, a weekly pulpit necessarily, we create niches, but we don't want to be so niched um, that people only see us as that. Sure, so you don't I want have to be typecasted as a preacher. But then also develop your holistic voice because you're even if you only have opportunity once every few months, how you do that is most of us are small group leaders. Right. And even if you have five or 10 minutes, I put my Alex Rodriguez hat on and say, I'm gonna give my best 10 minutes sure. where I'm gonna have quote, <laughs> I'm going to think, how is this 10 minutes going to engage my audience? Right. And not just think, you know, how can I put like five minutes of effort into it and just come unprepared. Sure. So I think is whatever, whatever pulpit we have one-on-one, -on -one, if we think of it like I am preparing for the thousands God's preparing me for, then that's how we'll prepare. Right. You know, I grew up in a Kaiapha Sam Houston State University, where in any given week, it was Eli Gotro, Eli Stewart, and Jason Bell preaching. Those guys are all stars. Yes. When is 20-year-old Alex Rodriguez <laughs> supposed to get preaching rep? So I- You came to Kazakhstan I, I came and to developed Kazakhstan. LTC, That's true. and you began to train your voice. That's true. So I, I, there you I go. trained my you voice in Kazakhstan, and I, I tried to treat my small group like my pulpit, yes. like you said. Yes. And I know some Kayalvas might frown upon that, but all my small group guys are radically saved and living for <laughs> Jesus, so I'm sure it's okay. Huh? So we both have positions now where there are large gaps of time between one sermon and the next. What do you do to stay ready for the pulpit when you're out of the pulpit? Right. Um, one thing is I'm in a small group of preachers and we do preach to each other. Can I tell you, I have, there's, I like there's three other preachers with me and if we haven't preached for like six months, it's like we're like singeing each other's eyebrows off. <laughs> Five hour long small group. It's like awesome. very long and we just go for it and we just preach to each other. But if you remember C.S. Lewis had an inkling club. He had the same where group, he it's took, true. So as preachers, like preachers with preachers that preach to each other, nurses practice on each other, preachers can I preach to each other. So that's one. Um, but when you think about God's word in your mouth, um, another thing that one of my mentors shared with me that I've put into practice is she said the shout, Psalm says to shout. So there's something that when the word of God engages your vocal cords. Um, so you're in my living room right now. So can I tell you, I have shouted around this house. You shout your I, pulpit. I literally. You, you practice from shouting in here. Shout around right. this house. You engage your vocal cords sure. and you engage, and you can do it through just like memorizing scripture. 
um, though I speak with the tongues, 1 Corinthians 13, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I become as a sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal. Right. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all faith that I could remove mountains. So you put passion and what starts happening is you start actually feeling biblical authority. I call it in my bones. Yeah. Like I feel I it. it in my the belly. Jeremiah 29. I, yeah, like I feel it in my bones. I start feeling the word of God start coming through me. And as preachers, what, do, what, what is Jesus known of? He was a man who spoke with authority. Yes. So when I don't have a pulpit, I shout around my house, I engage my vocal cords, I let authority of the word of God like build in my body, because this is like a body, soul, spirit activity, right? right? So, I mean, this house is holy. It has been preached around. <laughs> so preach around your house, get a group together that want to practice preaching. This is great for small group leaders. Man, just get a group together, bring your, like C.S. Lewis did, bring your 20 minute best and let's preach to each other. <laughs> it. Crystal, it's been a fun day learning from you, talking oh, with you. you. I got one last question for you. For all of our female preachers mm -hmm. out there today, for all of our Wesley Cates growing up to preach tomorrow, yes. what would you, what is your one piece of advice for any female preacher you're listening today? Yeah, well, I have such an affection for female preachers, and I know that when we come to a pulpit, we often come to a place where um, the pulpit has been normalized to male preachers. Not necessarily, it's not a biblical thing, it's a cultural thing that most of the churches that we attend have a male preacher. Right. So we come with almost that insecurity of Jeremiah often, but I'm, he was insecure because he was young and he was used to seeing old prophets. So when God said, hey, I'm gonna put my word in your mouth, I've called you since you've been an infant, um, he was like, but I'm too young. And I think most females, let's hope Wesley Kate doesn't have this because we will normalize it by the time she's ready for a let's pulpit. So. There we go. But for now, I think there's this, there can be an insecurity for being female. Mm -hmm. Like, is my voice going to be accepted in this place? Um, is it going to be valued? Are people going to listen to me? Is my voice too high pitched? And I feel like the Lord is speaking to us as he said to Jeremiah, don't, don't say you're too young. I think for our women, just don't use that as an excuse. Right. Bring who you are as a female to the table because the world needs you.